So as we move along with our study of circular functions, we're now at the point where we want to formally look at how we define sine, which you should be familiar with from right angle triangles, and cosine, which is a, another trig ratio that you should be familiar with. So you may have recognized this unit circle from the video we did right back at the start. And we had our circle with radius one centered at the origin. We created another radius here, which obviously made an angle with the positive x axis and that radius. And that that point here where it intersected the unit circle was going to be called P. And that the really important thing here was that we were interested in what the values of X and Y were. What we're going to do now is we're going to build a right angle triangle into this diagram. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drop a line straight down here and it is going to create a right angle with the X axis. So we've now got a right angle triangle. I'm just going to draw that out a little bit larger over here. So this would have been our radius. This would have been the line I just drew in and this is part of that horizontal X axis. And this is the right angle that was just drawn in here. So the last thing I might be able to draw in is that this angle here was theta. So because this has a radius of one, that means that this was one and that this length therefore is one. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to say that this length here is the X length. So from here to that new line that we've just drawn in, that's going to represent X because that's how far across we are at the point P and that this length going from here to here is going to represent Y because that's how far up we are at the point P. So that means that this length across here is X and that this length just here is going to be Y. And we want to think about how X and Y relate to the angle theta. So if we start with X, we've got an angle. We've got what we'd consider the hypotenuse because it's a right angle triangle and that length of one there is opposite our right angle. So that's the hypotenuse. And this X length would therefore be the adjacent. So that means that we have X is going to be related by cosine of theta. So let's start off with our knowledge that cosine of the angle theta is the ratio of A, the adjacent over H, the hypotenuse. And then we'll substitute in what we know about this particular triangle, remembering that it's still the triangle that's neatly inside our unit circle. So cos of theta doesn't change. So we have therefore that cosine of our angle is simply equal to the adjacent but it has a representation of X over the hypotenuse's value, which is one. So really what we've found there is that X equals, because X divided by one is just X, X is equal to the value of cosine of theta. So that's going to be really, really important in that we now can define cosine as a particular length or part of this construction of our unit circle. And as you may guess, we can now do a th similar thing for sine. So we know that sine of our angle is going to equal the opposite on the hypotenuse. So therefore, we have that sine of theta is going to equal the opposite length, which is represented by y, divided by the hypotenuse's value of 1. So therefore, we've found that y, this length here, or in fact that length there in the unit circle, is representing sine of the angle theta. So instead of having the x and the y that were just here, we now know that this is cosine of theta, and that this value is sine of theta. So the last thing that we're going to do in this video is just say that the point P of x, y actually captures what the cosine and sine values are. So x was cosine, so this is going to be cos of theta, comma, and the other part of this coordinate, the y value, is going to represent sine of theta. So now we've got a way of using our unit circle, once we've created an angle of theta in there, to find values of cosine of theta and sine of theta. Thus simply the coordinates where this line would intersect the unit circle. So we'll leave this video here. That's how we define sine and cosine. 
and we'll now move on to defining the tangent function and then we'll continue on finding more and more about these things called circular functions. So once again, I hope that's helped and stick around and stay tuned for future videos.